So I was chatting with this girl the other night and uh, it, it came up in the conversation that I had been uh, a participant in a Darren Brown episode. So if you weren't aware, I was in an episode back in 2012 called Fear and Faith Part 1, where I was given a pill to take every day for about three months. And I was told it would cure my fears and phobias and that myself and a group of other people, we would be the first ever civilians to be trying this pill, only to be told after the three months that it was nothing more than icing from a cake. It was a, it was a sugar pill. Now, the experience was absolutely fascinating. And certainly for me, it opened my eyes to how all of the doubts and limiting beliefs that we have are all just up here. And, you know, and that's something that I always take into consideration with every person that I meet and every person that I'm working with when they have self doubts, when they have limiting beliefs, when they genuinely believe that something is stopping them or preventing them from achieving their goals, or even perhaps they maybe feel very. Uh, demotivated and they struggle for motivation, I am able to then at least explain to them how, you know, you can turn it all around. And really that's what I want to share with you in this video is that one of the the big ways to turn things is around uh, turn things around is by having the awareness that your anxiety really is, you know, nothing more than a placebo. You have your anxiety because you think you have your anxiety. And kind of like with method acting, when you believe so much in a role, you actually create that role, you manifest it. And so you then fall into it. And a great example of this is uh, maybe when you were in school, you may have called up to um, to book a sick day off. So you could just probably stay at home, plan the PlayStation and, and whatnot. Or maybe you just wanted to have a break from work. You didn't want to see people. And so you decided, I'm not going to do anything. So I'm going to call in and I'm going to say that I'm sick. And when you do call in your boss or your teacher or whoever, you start like coughing and you're like, oh, I'm not really well oh, and all this, you know, and you you put yourself in a position where you try and genuinely make it sound like you are ill and that the other person will believe you. And what happens usually when people do that? Suddenly, a few hours later, they actually fall ill. Now, they didn't like uh, predict uh, the future was going to play out here they actually had created that physicality of the illness by forcing the body to behave in that manner. So if you believe that you just can't meet any women, that your dating life sucks and it's not going to get any better, what do you think is going to happen? Your dating life is going to suck and it's not going to get any better because you are creating that. And I don't want to sound like a broken record with it, but if anything, I'm just trying to emphasize how this limiting belief literally can play out. That voice in your head repeats over and over again saying, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You're going to fail. It's not going to work. Why should you bother doing this? Why is she going to be attracted to you? You know, why she's not going to give you her phone number. Don't even bother. You don't deserve to get phone numbers from people. You're not confident. You're really shy. You know, you're never going to improve. All of this, and these are limiting beliefs that I have heard from clients over the years. When I've gone out with dating coaches or when I've been very fortunate to be the one to take a guy out and help them with their dating skills, it is amazing how quickly those limiting beliefs will come up as soon as you encourage a guy to go and talk to a very pretty woman that they're attracted to. The hesitation kicks in. The doubts, most importantly, kick in. I can't do it. The language or the identity of the language of I, I cannot do it. Not this idea of, you know what, I will give it a go. I'm going to try. We'll see what happens. Or you know what? I can do this. You don't hear any positive language that comes out of these guys. It's always negative. And so that negative reinforcement just makes things harder. 
Trust me when I say when I was on the placebo, when I was taking that sugar pill, I had no idea the effects that were going to happen thereafter it. And what made the experience realistic, and if you want to even check out the episode, by all means, go ahead and you'll even see how I react. But at the start of the episode, we are taken to a pharmaceutical center and there are people walking around in lab coats. um, And the first placebo that we have is an injection. Now, of course, the people in lab coats were actors and actresses And that injection was nothing more than just saline solution. So it was water. But the experience and most importantly, the environment is what made it feel even more realistic. So our limiting beliefs that we have aren't just created by ourselves, but it's also created by the environment that we're in. It's our reactions to things that are happening in the environment and also how we interpret other people reacting to us in the environment as well. I'm bouncing off of my surroundings. My surroundings are bouncing off of me and the interpretation that we are both having is what creates that reality. So it sounds quite complicated, so I will simplify it. That if I am acting really negative and I start portraying this negative look externally, so if I look sad, if I look frightened, if I act petrified or scared or anxious, then other people who see that will see that I am anxious or nervous and stuff And so they will react to that in a certain way. And then however they react, I will then take that as feedback as, oh, I must be an anxious person. And a great example of this is if you are an anxious guy who has gone to maybe like a house party or a bar or a club, and you feel very out of place when you're in a new environment. And the paranoia kicks in when you go in and you feel really shy or maybe awkward. And then you start thinking, hang on a minute, other people are seeing that I'm being really shy and awkward. Oh, I must be really that. And then because your focus and attention is on the anxiety and awkwardness, it kind of creates it more and more. It builds it up until that is who you are in that moment. Whereas if you can try and reframe it, or at least just become aware of your behavior with that, that is how you can start to overwrite it. You have to challenge every limiting belief that you have. You can't let yourself fall into the trap of believing that your negativity or how you feel in that moment is real and is true. You have to believe that your emotion and your physicality and your behavior can change. And it can change if you, one, want it to change, and two, you force it to change. And you do that through method acting. So a very simple exercise that I'm going to give you to do, and this is something that I have also tried and tested myself, and actually I actually got a date out of it, which was great. When you leave the house next or the next time you go somewhere, whether you need to go shopping or whatever, I want you to act like you're in a really good mood. I want you to be smiling. I want you to feel great. I want you to feel amazing. However shit your day is, however bad you might feel, try and think really, really positive. Think energetic like, yes, I'm going to have a great day today. Today is going to be awesome. I am going to end up talking. I'm going to talk to some amazing women today and it is going to go well. And if it doesn't, you know what? That's okay too. That woman is probably not going to be my type and I'm probably not hers. I'm just going to move on. That is just going to be a great experience for me to tell my friends at a later time. Just think really optimistically. Think really positively. And even if you don't want to go and talk to people, that's fine. But go out and just smile at people. Just don't do anything like creepy. Don't be like, you know, let's not freak people out here. But go out, smile at people, be in a really good mood and do that for as long as you can. Maybe, in fact, go out for a couple of hours and experience this. And 
you'll be amazed at what happens physically and emotionally and spiritually to you as you are method acting your way to doing something more positive. But we're so used to doing method acting in a negative way, like that we will we, we doubt ourselves, we'll put ourselves down, or we'll fake being ill. No one really considers to try and method act their way to having a much more positive outlook in life. So give that a go. The next time you go out the house, have a smile on your face, hold eye contact with people and think like, wow, have a great day today. And you know what will happen? Eventually you'll feel really in the mood. You'll feel so great that you probably will start giving people compliments or having conversations with people or you might even get a cheeky smile back from someone that you're attracted to. And then you might think, you know what? I'm in such a good mood. I'm going to go and do it. So your method method act your way into being in a good mood. And believe it or not, you will get some great reactions from it. I'm not going to say great results because that isn't going to be fair. For a guy who isn't yet confident or doesn't know how to have conversations isn't going to be in that place just yet. But I want you to just experience a different shift of energy in your body. And I want you to understand that the negativity that you have, the anxiety that you've got is a placebo if you believe that you have that anxiety. And the more that you hold on to it, the more difficult it is going to be to let it go and to move on and to develop that confidence. You almost have to forget about your anxiety to actually develop your confidence. And it's interesting because that's exactly the process that takes place when people get into flow state. They become more grounded, they think less, that inner voice tends to calm down and they tend to process things more externally and react to things that are in their environment. So it's it's just an interesting experience that when you can uh, essentially... I don't know if fake it till you make it is a fair thing for this, but definitely you can method act your way into being in a good mood and you will see a big shift in just how you react to the environment and how people in the environment will react to you. So we'll leave it there. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on this video and please do go and try this. Leave your house at some point or maybe even now Go out, smile at people, hold eye contact, method act your way to being in a good mood, listen to good music, think great positive things, fake it. It might feel weird first, but encourage yourself to feel great about yourself. And let me know in the comments below how that works for you. But other than that, if you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel where I can give even more advice on how to help you with your anxiety in dating. And as well, don't be afraid. If you are struggling, do reach out to me. I would love to be able to help you. This is something that should be um, kind of a second nature for people, just being able to go out and be sociable. Maybe not so much cold approaching, but definitely to be able to go to a social environment and talk to people without necessarily being afraid or being that person who has to hide in a corner. So if you find even this exercise is quite a challenge for you, then do reach out. I would love to chat to you about how maybe I can help you in person because I know how important it is to just get over that first hurdle with talking to people if you want to overcome your social anxiety. And it's fair to say that 99% of guys, and maybe that statistic is right or not, I don't know, but most guys, they need their hand held, at least for the start of things. They need someone to just guide them through the hardest bit to support them and give them the nurturing they need so they can start doing things on their own. There is nothing wrong with admitting that. So do check out my website, do have a look at my services, but at the very least, do reach out for a consultation. I offer uh, my free uh, sessions of speaking to people, giving them advice, and hopefully sending you 
um, on the right path to actually making changes. So I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Check out my website, comment below, try the exercise. And until next time, have a great day.